Hi guys. It's been a while again. I'm really trying to be more consistent, but uh, yeah, I'm quite busy and I have a lot of dis different responsibilities. But I do think about you during the week, especially those that comment on my page and I do pray for you. And uh, we are going to continue today with this idea of burnt offering the tents of Kedar, I want to add, add emotional well-being and that females are different from males and we have a lot of interesting qualities that need to be channeled in the right direction in order for them to uh, make our lives fruitful as God has intended us to be. So uh, let's go back a little bit to the burned offering. And we talked about a little bit about the pain that we feel inside and we don't always get the handle of it. You know, when things don't go right, when they don't go my way or not the way I should, or I think if you do it this way, then something's wrong is gonna happen in the future. Well. When we have those things piled upon us, we very often we process it emotionally and uh, it creates a certain kind of pain within us. Now, this pain needs to be channeled, okay? In itself, this pain is very destructive because it causes us maybe to speak the wrong things at the wrong time. And here I want to read James chapter 3, verses 1, 2, um, I believe 4. So just let me read it. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. That's not it. We're going to skip that one. But here, for in many things we offend all. If any man not if any man offend not in word, talking, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, big, and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed, the captain, right? It's an old language. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindled. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set it on fire, the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. So I want to encourage you to read this passage. It is James chapter 3, really starting... Uh, from verse 2 to verse 6, not 4. What is the saying? It is basically talking about this mouthpiece here. You know, it can talk. It has a lot of power. You can do a lot with your... You can do a lot of damage with your tongue. Especially when you are provoked to say the wrong things. Verse 6 says, uh, it is set on fire of hell. You do have an enemy who stirs the fire in your heart and then you start talking and uh, you say the wrong things. So you don't want that to happen. You want your tongue to be under your control so it can say the things that you want it to say for the purposes that you want it to be. 
You don't want to have a destructive tongue. There is a tongue that cuts down, you know, is always cutting down people. That's in Proverbs right now. I don't remember where it is. But the tongue of the wise is life. So it matters. In the end, it pays off to control your tongue. So how can that be done when you're so much on fire in the inside and things just, you know, just don't seem to go right and you are wondering, oh man, if this guy is going to do this, I know we're going to have another payment and we're not going to be able to make it and this and that and that is going to happen, right? So that's the situation we often face as women. Um, we are intuitive. We kind of know, we know some things in our emotions, in the way we perceive things on the inside. That makes it harder to control things. Our intuition must be under subjection, okay, in order for it to um, be beneficial. We are made that way. We are wired that way. But we, are also, we must also understand that our enemy attacks us that way. And uh, since intuition is something that is not seen, just like the emotions when they hurt, we have a little bit harder of a time to control it. And our mouth must not be tied to it. Okay, so we have to burn that part up before God. We have to let it burn. It has to hurt, okay, until God takes it from us. And when he takes it from us, he changes our speech around and makes it wise. And in this situation, we might find ourselves surprised of what good things come out of our mouth. We didn't even know we had it in us. But that's the mouth of the wise. A wise woman builded her house, but a foolish one tears it down with her own hands. It's still talking about the tongue, mostly what we do. So, um, so we let that burn. We burn it up before God. We submit ourselves before God. We bring our hearts before God, and we allow God to work in us, work his will in us. No matter what, he is still in control. He's in control over our husbands. He's in control over our families. And very often the way the problem presents itself to us is a lie in itself. It is either magnified, taken out of proportion or whatever. The enemy is looking to cause division and trouble. So in faith, you can submit yourself unto God and keep your mouth and use your mouth when God gives you the wisdom to speak it and you will be saying a whole lot more that you could do in five hours of ranting that is destructive believe me I've been there done that you know I've learned the hard way so um, I think that's it for today yeah, just let me add, it still has to do with the tents of Kedar. Keeping your own tent. Working things out with God in your own tent. It's a blessing to do that. You know, if you pursue the tents of Kedar, you find it in the Songs of Solomon. Now, the Songs of Solomon has very figurative language and it's very hard to understand. So... When you read through it, you might find like, oh my gosh, you know, what is this saying? But just know that the tents of Keda, the one, the, the beloved, is the beloved of God, is dwelling in one of these tents, taking care in one, or in one of her tents. The ultimate fate of the beloved is coming out in power, coming out of the wilderness and coming out in the strength of God. So that is the promise. You add, you add as a, uh, you become a woman of virtue, power and strength. Somebody who is faithful, trustworthy. You know, the enemy doesn't want to mess with a woman like that. 
okay and your family is covered your children are covered your husband is covered your household is covered if you take a hold of these words of the bible you will be different you are living under a different standard from what the world lives thank you jesus that is such a blessing hear me you are living under a different standard you are not like the others in the world who go around talking about their husbands their children tearing things down don't have any hope no 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 if you take a hold of the word of god you are living under the standard of life power and virtue so i want to encourage you to take a hold of this word and make it yours that's it for today have a wonderful day god bless you